Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 98. Hoping you guys are doing well. I'm outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful, cool, breezy night. Um, I'm going to try to stay away from the wind as possible, as much as I possibly can, uh, so that way we don't get no no wind effect happening up in the microphone. Um, Pretty good day today. Wife was outside doing yard work. Um, she likes to do it. It's not that. I mean, I don't mind doing it. Uh, we have some bushes that we're trying to remove. She's cutting them down. Uh, then what I'm gonna do uh, probably by the weekend is I have to do like um, what they told me to do to get the roots up is to tie like a cable <clears throat> around it, put it in the back of my Jeep, and drive. <laughs> So let's see how that works out. <laughs> I hope they're giving me the right information. No, but I got that from a few people. They say, yeah, that's the easiest way. Because of that, what happens is the stumps and the little uh, our roots stay there and bushes start to grow from them. I know, because I've done it before. In fact, one of the houses I had around the corner, I cut the I cut it into a nice stump, man. I mean, it looked like a really, I hooked it up, right? And then what I what I was noticing is that um branches were growing right out of the stump it was crazy and then i did the same over here in front of my house on the side where my son's room was and i had cut it down and cleared it out because we didn't need we don't need all those bushes we really really don't anybody who's been to my house can will tell you man it's just a little bit too much man and i'm not really one we're not really ones to maintain those things like we don't sit there and shape them into like Disney characters and shit, you know what I mean? So they could get a little kind of f- funky. And then there's one, I don't know if there's a flower in it or something. See, North Carolina is already known for its flies. They, they say that's the state bird. Um, <clears throat> but I have one of the bushes there that seem to attract a lot of flies. Like, if I go over there and I spray it with water or something, all of a sudden, flies come out of it. I'm like, and there's nothing dead in it. I've checked all of that. It has to do with the bush because somebody told me that. Um, but anyway, so we knocked out two of those. Well, Angel did. What she's doing, she's just going in and cutting them like low, where basically we could jump over them. And then, uh, cause there's no more, no more leaves. Those we put over in the side, let the garbage truck take them. Um, and then what we'll do is just uh, pull the roots out. I hope it works out well. Um, so we can get rid of that. Cause we look at some of these other houses that don't have the bushes around. They look really nice, you know? I like flowers. I'm not big on the bushes. I just, just don't like them. I really don't. For other people, they look beautiful. People who love the bushes and they maintain they have the right bushes that's the key like some of these people have those bushes where you could shave them real nice you can make them like square or maybe roundish not this thing because the leaves on these bushes only sit like on the top branch so they don't go deep so what happens is when you trim it all you have is a bunch of sticks (laughs) sticking up in the air so it's not a good look when i first got this house and I did that, I thought I did something wrong. It was really embarrassing because everyone had these really nice, everyone was out shaving their, their bushes and their bushes looked nice and square. And I'm here thinking I'm gonna make this thing, trim it down, make it nice and square. Nah, man, the, think about it. So you have all these branches coming up, they're high. They're probably about maybe four and a half feet high. They're pretty high. And then you shave off the, the leaves and it's, the leaves are all at the tip. So now, now all you have is a bush of branches. It's the weirdest thing. So, but anyway, <clears throat> so hopefully uh, we can pull that up and yeah, I hope they pull up with like no problem. Because if they do, I'm gonna be getting rid of a lot of, sh- lot of branches and, and bushes and stuff from that are here. This is, I think this might be a good time to do that, you know? As long as I don't get hurt, we don't do anything that can hurt ourselves or end up in the hospital. Other than that, you know, same old, did a really cool TikTok this morning. It was cool if you guys seen it. It was the one where I'm coming outside with my um, my uh, my mask, my hazmat mask, and uh, 
have the butterflies. And it's kind of it was kind of cool. And what's so crazy is that I had another one that I wanted to do, but it was gonna take some work. And I really didn't want to. I, I had some stuff I had to do. So I really, if I wanted to get out early enough, I didn't. I didn't really have the time to do that one. That one was going to require a little bit of a production, a little bit back and forth. So it was going to take a couple hours to do it. This one, I needed something um, that was ready to go. And what happens is I store away a lot of the ideas. So like when I get up in the morning, it, uh, sometimes I'll find a fresh idea like from scratch that has not been done or I haven't done it. Um, a lot of times they, they come from other ideas and then I just kind of add my little twist to them and record them my way. Um, but a lot of times uh, I have uh, have these things saved. So I, I know more or less what I want to record. Um, but sometimes I'll scroll through, let's say TikTok or something, and I'll find something brand new. And I'll say, okay, you know what? So I'll bypass all the ones that I saved just to use the one that I just found. So, And that's what happened today. And uh, as soon as I saw that when it just started to play, I was inspired. I said, okay. I said, I have an idea. And... I worked on it. I thought it came out really good. It got a lot of love. That's cool. Well, everybody who gave me likes and loves, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I get a lot of, again, I was getting a lot of comments. People telling me how much they love them and how they look forward to them. And that's cool. And that's cool because um, I, I like, I enjoy doing them. Now, if people weren't liking them, then I don't know. Would I still be doing them? I don't know. I don't know. I enjoy them. So maybe... Maybe I would. Maybe I would. So, um, uh, what else? Um, nothing much, you know. Just uh, I just saw a video a little while ago. It was kind of kind of creepy. It was um, they were going through like all the city streets, like different towns around the world, like popular towns, and they were showing these places deserted, and they had it with some like pretty sad music, and it was really a scary sight man you know um they're showing rome they showed new york they showed chicago they showed la they showed all these all these areas that normally have a lot of people empty and it looked like something that was produced out of a movie like the end of the world kind of situation because all you see is like garbage debris like pieces of paper uh being blown or blown in the courtyard of you know some famous spot or it was just really really creepy man and um yeah it was kind of kind of sad seeing a lot of people getting this shit man you know it's scary scary as hell man i hope hope none of you guys that listen to me man are experiencing having any kind of uh experience with this stuff man whether with yourself or with your family or friends and you know, I kind of wish nobody would, you know, but I'm talking to you, so. And uh, it just kind of, it still baffles me. It's like, you know, so what, you know, what is this going to do for society? What is, what is this going to do for us? Like, how's our mentality changing? You know, I'll tell you one thing. I'll, I'll tell you, I think people are going to not just stock up on food. I say in the future, people are going to be stocking up on these masks and stuff I know I will you know so anybody who's selling these things when this is over um uh it's gonna be crazy you know I think a lot of those things are gonna be sold and uh I definitely believe that uh hospitals need to have more than enough so like these things have to be stored especially for the for the hospital workers I mean not the millions these things have to be stored in the billions like i think states need to be able to manufacture this stuff for their own for each of their own states so that way they can provide all the hospitals and you know people can get their own and stay home and you get the reusable ones but these hospital workers man you know my daughter's one and you know it's very very scary situation you know so, on another note, it was crazy. I was talking to a friend of mine today. So, we, we had a long conversation. We're going back and forth. And something came up was pretty interesting. And I said, you know what? I'm going to bring that up tonight when I, uh, when I get on the podcast. And there was a comment that he made. And it was the first time I really heard it that way. 
And you guys probably heard this before. And it has nothing to do with the corona shit right now. But he said... I know where he was going. I know where the context is. He was talking about technology and stuff. But he said that the kids these days... Are, are most of smarter than the adults. That the kids these days are smarter than most of the adults. What do you guys think about that? You agree? That the kids these days are smarter than the adults. And the reason why people think this way, you you probably already know, has to do with technology. The fact that these kids, you know, can grab a computer or can grab a cell phone and can navigate themselves through whether they're apps or programs like like it was second nature, like it was a part of their own body. Um, the fact that they they understand these things. Some people apparently, because it's not the, really the first time I heard of it, but it's the first time that it was I was somebody talked to me directly and, and brought it up. Um, but people tend to believe that because of the fact that kids can do these things, that that makes them smarter than the adults. And I think they're smart kids. And I think they are dumb adults. But on average, I do not think that kids these days are smarter than adults. Not at all. Because I believe that a big piece or big part of being smart is through experience. And it also depends on what do you consider smart. You know, oh, I I know technology better than you. I know how to run apps better than you. Okay, all right. Cool. That doesn't make you smarter than me. You know? I bet you there's a lot of things I was doing when I was growing up that these kids can't do. You know? I knew how to go outside and make up some games and play all day. These kids don't know how to do that. I knew how to do flips, backflips, and so on. Well, some kids could do that now. <laughs> but a lot of these kids are... Are fat, <laughs> they're getting fat, <laughs> but uh, now when I was growing up, we were able to run fast, you know. Um, I remember growing up making go karts out of you know, two by fours and shopping cart wheels and wooden milk crates for seats. But you, these kids don't know how to make one of those. Um, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that um, that we did back in the day. We knew how to, you know, a lot of us are from the city, especially, I, I'm going to say because of New York, because that's where I'm from. We were able to, to, you know, move around the city without, and, and still having survived. You know, a lot of these kids, they'll be terrified to do that these days. They won't walk through the city. You know, we were able to, sounds negative, but we were able to fight. A lot of these kids these days, man, unless they got some sort of training, taekwondo or whatever, they don't know how to fight, man. They really don't. Got a handful that know how. If they're being trained. The street fighting? Nah, man, I've seen these kids fight, man. They all fight like little girls. And women know how to throw a proper punch. So, so when it comes to technology, just because a child can navigate, can grab your phone and navigate it, and navigate through it with, with ease, doesn't make them smarter than the adults. You know, we grew up, for, for instance, I'm 50 years old. So before I really got into computers, okay, I got into computers in my... I got to say, I'll tell you now, mid-20s, mid to late 20s is when I got into computers. So now think about the 20 years, 25 years prior. 
all the things and all the information that my brain had to gather in order to survive, in order to make it to where I was at that point. And then once I did that, then I learned computers. And back then, you know, we didn't have smartphones. We didn't even have Windows. I, I remember when Windows came in and I, I used it, but we were using things like WordPerfect 5.0 or Lotus 1, 2, 3. You know, people talk about Photoshop. Uh-uh. It was called Print Shop back then. And all it was was a bunch of uh, stock photos that you kind of put together and, and create your own image. Didn't have, was nothing. And there was no internet. Now these kids do not know what it means to be without internet. They have no idea. They have no idea what it's like to have even dial up internet, let alone no internet at all. They don't even know what it is to have dial up. Half these kids probably wouldn't have the patience. If you gave it to them right now, they'll be crying and they'll move. Mom, dad, what is this? What's this noise this thing is making? Why is it taking so long? I can't, I can't wait. These kids don't have, they won't have no patience. You know? They used to these high graphic uh, video games. What if you gave them Pong? <laughs> what if you give them Pong? That might be a cool, interesting uh, experiment. You know, take some kids for like a month, you know, bring them into whatever into an apartment like that big brother shit and, and give them all this native stuff I bet, I bet you they don't even know how to dial a telephone you give them a dial they're not gonna know what the hell to do well how do you do this i guarantee you give them a record player a lot of them won't know what a record player is or a cassette tape they won't know how to do it <laughs> you know give them uh an external voicemail uh answering machine with a tape in it it will have no idea how to deal with this thing, you know? So we had to gather a lot of information. We had to learn a lot of stuff until we were, well, me, until I was 25. And then once I was 25, then I learned computers. Now I had to learn a whole bunch of new shit. Now these new kids growing up, they skipped that whole first part. That first 25 years, they skipped that. I have grandkids that are three and four years old. They work the, the phones like it's second nature. Like it's second nature. Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. You know? But I understand it. It makes total sense. People look at them like they're these little geniuses. Oh my God. Look at how they use the phone. Like, you know, it's be all, they have no other, that's all they learned. That's how they, that's all they learned. They learned it quick because they had nothing else in their head. It wasn't like we had to switch from a regular corded phone with a cord to, to, a, to a cell phone. See, we had to adapt to change. They didn't. They were born into change. Shit had already changed. I remember when I got my mother her first cordless phone. So funny. It was the one that had the regular metal antenna that you pulled out. Okay? Because my mother used to always trip if I was on the phone. And she, even though she had a real long one, real long cables. So she had two phones. She had one in the bedroom and she had one in the kitchen. The one in the bedroom she would pick up. She would, but she never really talked it. That's just emergency. Somebody calls. Um, come to think about it, early on, she didn't even have that one. All we had was the one in the kitchen. So it was like in the kitchen dining room area. But the thing is, we had this long ass, probably 15 feet if you don't pull on it. And then probably you get another, another 10 feet if you stretch the cord. And since I always like to pace, even back then, you know, I would pace. And even though I didn't stretch the cord, I stretched it a little further than I should have. Um, like it was still it was still dangling on the ground. And I used to get yelled at, stop stretching the damn cord. So when we got on the phone, I used to have to sit really close by. Like on the couch or sit on the chair. She used to tell me to sit down. 
Now, this was what was funny. When I bought her her cordless phone for the first time with the antenna, okay? <laughs> she used to talk on the phone, like, right next to the receiver. <laughs> so she'll stand right next, like, if it was, like, some invisible cord. I would tell her, you know, you could take that to your room. You could take that to your bed if you want. You could take it in the bathroom if you want. No, 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 it sounds better here. Nah, that was bullshit. It sounded good everywhere. I was in her mind. In her mind, if she walked away from that phone, it was going to be staticky. I hate these damn phones. <laughs> it was the funniest thing on earth, man. Oh, my God. But, um, but yeah, so, I, no, I do not think the kids are smarter these days. They just never had to adapt. Now, they will have to adapt later on because as they get older, the stuff that they're so accustomed to... Um, isn't gonna be uh, it's gonna change also. There's gonna be other things that change. I'll give you another, in another example, okay? Think about our grandparents when they first got a television. Now, we were all born with a television, most of us, okay? So we are, there was already, televisions already exist. They might've only been black and white, but they existed. So well, a lot of us don't remember, some of us do, some of you older asses, but, a lot of us don't remember not having a television. So we never had to adapt from listening to our TV shows on radio to now watching them on TV, because that's what it was about. The family used to sit around the radio and listen to their favorite radio show. Then the radio show became a television show. Now they created, you know, you know, visuals with it. And, you know, I don't think it was the same shows. Might have been different shows, but now they transition. And even though there was televisions, people could not mentally adapt. A lot of the older ones couldn't adapt to leaving the radio. They still, even though they had a TV there, they would still sit around the radio and listen to their favorite show because they've gotten so accustomed to that. Yet their kids now really didn't have to adapt, you know? Their kids were born with televisions. All they had to adapt was the evolution of televisions. From black and white to color, to remote controls, to cable, you know what I mean? So uh, flat screens, smart TVs. So we only had to adapt, but we still, we still knew the TV. We still understood the TV. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, you know, so just keep that in mind. So when you see a kid flipping through your phone or flipping through his phone or getting on the computer, it's not that he's smarter than anyone. He just didn't have to um, adapt. That was, uh, he was born into that, you know. So anyway, I just want to bring that up to you guys. I don't know what you thought about it. Something to think about. A little food for, for thought. Uh, that's it for tonight. I'm done. Uh, I'm going to call it a night. I appreciate you guys, all of you. Um, please make sure, uh, share those TikToks for me. You know, give them some hearts. Um, um, I, I enjoy them. I enjoy making them. I'm glad you're enjoying them. So, uh, and um, that's it. So, until tomorrow, be cool and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.